Joe? Yes, sir. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. How are you? Good, man. Good. Uh, been a few few minutes since your fight. Um, how are you feeling, and how do you feel about that performance? Yeah, I feel good. You know, a little banged up, but nothing crazy. Um, I'm proud of that performance. I mean, that's a tough guy. It's a well-rounded guy. Uh, very explosive, very dangerous through the entire fight. Um, I really thought I had him finished in the second. He probably grabbed my glove seven or eight times, so that got tough. Um, but, you know, uh, Chris Tagnoni, the ref, did an awesome job. You know, I really, really appreciate him, you know, actually being on top of the action. Because I, like I said in an interview back there, I've been a back taker for a long time, and I'm no stranger to guys grabbing my glove. And you call it out, and they don't say anything. You know, I had to call it out a couple times, but, you know, ultimately he took a point, which was the right thing to do. So, uh, you know, it's hard to tell with judging and everything, but I wasn't parading around holding my hands up, not because I didn't think we got it. I just, uh, I popped my rib out on a, on a kind of a failed takedown in the third. So I just wanted to hold myself up against the fence and let, let the judges do their thing. I don't need to parade around and put on, a, you know, a smoke and mirrors. I just, I'm going to do my work and then wait for the result, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'm proud of the performance. It was tough. I've had some finesse performances in the UFC now, and I've had some grinds. And uh, this was a grind, but I'm proud of that. What was the game plan going into the fight? Uh, compete. You know, uh, you know, I can't be lax days goal in any position. You know, the only spot I think I was – was on my back and closed guard in the third. In the first, I think it was a smart thing because I had got dropped. Um, my equilibrium came right back as soon as we hit the ground, but I was going for submissions. I was not being content. In the third, a little content, um, but we got back up, you know, and I started slinging again. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was competing for every single position. Can't be complacent, can't be lax days ago. And when I did that, I think that was ultimately the difference. He cracked you in, uh, in, in the first round. Um, mm -hmm. How hurt were you? Were you dazed? Like what? Surprisingly, no. You know, I know that's the cliche thing. I wasn't hurt. I was when he hit me, and by the time my butt hit the floor, I was back. It was equilibrium. My legs felt great. Uh, felt good getting right into the submissions right away. I gave a couple, like, silent conversations in my corner, some nods and stuff, and uh, we were fine, which is awesome. It's always a great feeling when, uh, when you, you know, you get hit, and you're like, oh, okay, that was definitely his best shot. It's the first two minutes. You don't get more explosive than that, and we're still here, you know? We're never out of a fight, so, uh, yeah, I mean, God has blessed me tonight with a great performance and uh, kept me sober-minded out there and in the present. And that's, that's all I was praying for and asking for going into the fight. And uh, that's exactly what happened. So I just feel super blessed tonight. How does it feel to be back in the win column? I wanted to go back to your uh, previous fight. It was your first loss in the UFC. What were the emotions like um, that night? And, like, you know, just kind of, just kind of talk about that. Yeah, uh, you know, it was, it was similar to this fight in the sense it was close. But... I was more complacent. You know, I don't think I fought tooth and nail for the things that I needed to fight for. So uh, that was a big thing, and it was a, it was a slow cook coming out of that fight. You know, we had a, a fun third round in that last fight, and uh, you came out on a high because we were competing. You know, we were having fun. It was almost like a spar. But uh, every passing day that went by, was, you know, it stung worse and worse and worse. And, uh, you know, for eight months I had to sit on that and stew on it. Uh, but ultimately it led me to a lot of great changes and to look at my own career and my own life in every single area, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually. And... Uh, you know, it made me a better man and a better fighter. So while I wanted that win desperately, I probably wouldn't have got this one without that. So, you know, uh, God works in mysterious ways, and, and a lot of times it's years and years till I'll see why that happened. But in the short term, I can definitely see some benefits to, to that decision going his way. And uh, that's ultimately what I have to do tonight is, is can't be a victim of getting my hand raised in a tough decision. I have to look at it and study it. And, you know, the same way when I lost, go back to the drawing board, we're going to do the same thing after this, of course. So, uh, you know. So many good things to take out of wins and losses, and that's fighting. You know, this game's changing so much. There's so much to learn every single time. In your off time, you got able to compete against Cowboy. You tapped him. How'd that feel? It was awesome. You know, it really, uh, I did a couple things like that. I went to the ADCC trials. I went two and one there. Um, you know, it's some of the best guys in the world, so it is tough to go into a, you know, it's a completely different sport now and go compete. Um, I did that. I did the UFC Fight Pass Invitational here against Gregory Rodriguez, who's a gigantic middleweight monster, and then Cowboy. But the big thing with that was, Exactly what I've been talking about, competing. You know, I love to compete. And getting to the UFC, that pressure came in. You know, it was 3-0 at the time. And um, start worrying about things I didn't worry about. Image or and not image in a bad way where I'm like, you know, not training or anything, but just going like, oh, man, this person doesn't think I'm good enough. That person doesn't. It does not matter. I, I got into this because I love to compete. And since I was a little kid, I wanted to find a way to make it my career. And I did that. And uh, getting back to, like, the cowboy thing, it was just awesome to go out there. It was back home where I'm from outside of Philly. And uh, friends, family, my lifelong coach, John Hassett, coached me for it. So it was just the, the core essence of why I got into this, you know, which is using what I've been given. And uh, it was awesome. So that was, I think, the huge factor in coming back into fight week, you know, reinvigorated, refreshed, and ready to compete. You know, this is, you know, seven, eight years from now, I'm not going to be doing this whether, you know, no matter what, probably, you know, I'm a, doing my math, but, you know, or whatever, 10 years tops. Uh, it's all a blessing. Anytime I get to step out here and compete, it's an absolute blessing. And, and I think I forgot that for a while. 
when, when would you like to get back in the cage? Uh, as soon as possible. I got a little little ribbit issue right now. Uh, we'll see how long that heals up. But yeah, I think definitely before the end of the year. You know, I, I'd like to be more active than I've been. But anytime I can get out here and compete, it's amazing. So uh, I'll be ready when they call as long as I'm healthy. So that's it. Right now, I just want to get home, hug my wife, my daughter. Uh, it's been a long, tough week. Um, you know, a long, tough camp. So just get home, see my family, celebrate with them, and I'll be right back in the gym doing something on Monday, uh, te uh, teaching. I'll be teaching at Port City MMA, Salsa Dollar Jiu-Jitsu, Monday night, best I can. Probably nothing that involves twisting and turning. So, uh, But, yeah, I'm just excited to get back in the gym with my teammates, my coaches, my family, and uh, just this is a lifestyle for me. I just love to do it every single day. Finally, for me, uh, fantastic beard. You, uh, <laughs> I appreciate that because some friends have been ridiculing me. Big Matt, uh, yeah. No, it's fantastic. Uh, I think you should keep it. Are you going to keep it? <laughs> it's up to my wife. I did it between fights. It was winter. Kept it for the Cowboy match. It was still kind of patchy. And uh, she's like, you're not shaving that. I like it. So, yeah, as long as she says that, I got to keep her happy. And uh, it's good, you know. I fought Jim Miller. He's like the rugged guy. I was like, okay, maybe I'll get a little bit of that shine. And, uh, you know, I'm not a big flashy guy, so maybe I could be like uh, – and now the performances are being – I'm a grinder now too, so I guess I got to keep it and keep the rugged thing going. I don't know. We have Brian Barbarina, our teammate, as like a legendary beard. So uh, I got to go in there and, you know, play second fiddle to that beard. But uh, it's a good beard mentor, I guess. Yeah, it is a fantastic beard, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. When uh, Dan Eagle was here, he talked about, like, you believe your own hype. And you kind of touched on something similar with, you know, it being a blessing. What happens? Well, what is it that this, you know, takes you away from having a good time and being Joe? Yeah, it wasn't believing my own hype. It was the opposite. You know, it was, uh, you know, we, we, we shame ourselves all the time. You know, it's what we do. Um, but I think for a long time, you know, I came up in this sport losing, you know, in jiu-jitsu as a kid. I, I mean, I started at six and I didn't literally didn't win anything until I was 16. And uh, I think I took over for all those negative voices, whatever it may be. I became that for myself, you know, and uh, that's never a good thing. And what I do realize, uh, and this is through, you know, my faith is that that's two sides to the same coin. Being arrogant and being so self-absorbed on the shame side is the same thing, you know. Um, it's, self, it's still self-absorbed, you know. And I said, I, I walked into that last fight almost overanalyzing every little thing I was doing, which is so not me. I'm a lifelong competitor. Tonight I was in a flow state. You know, I got back to that, which is, it's just, you know, it's just uh, knowing that God has a plan for me and, and trusting in his plan. And, you know, it, I said it backstage and all week, you know, with my team and my family is if I truly believe the, the, the things that I believe and, and, and I try to be who I say that I am, then I have to go out there, you know, at peace with what's going to be on the other side. You know, that's God's plan for my life. So uh, it's that. And then I can go out and compete freely. And, you know, that's the biggest thing for me. So, uh, yeah, just, just going out there and being myself and not overanalyzing it and not playing too far into the noise. This sport is crazy, you know. Uh, I won a close decision. I said, I, I'm not going to go read the comments tonight. There's going to be, you know, especially when you fight a Brazilian, like, they're a very passionate crowd. Like, I'm going to get some death threats and stuff, I'm sure. Or if you mess with anybody's parlay. Do not mess with anybody's parlay. Uh, but, yeah, it's just, it's just not playing into that nonsense. It does not matter because what I came to realize last time is it lasts from Saturday to Friday because next Saturday there's another card and they're on to somebody else. So uh, just not playing into the nonsense, not playing into the negativity, and not being that person for myself, you know. I got to let myself off the hook too. I got a great family, great coaches, great team, and, uh, you know, with their help I'm able to just be me out here and go do what it is that I do, which is compete and have fun. Excellent, man. Thank you for that. And you touched on that decision, uh, the decision. What was going through your head? When they were reading the scorecards, the majority is like, okay, what, what were they watching? Yeah, and that's the thing. It's coming down to one guy's opinion, and that's the difference between your show money and your win money and, and your record in the UFC. It's all, it's all very you know, important stuff where I do think sometimes the guys in that position don't treat it with the reverence that it deserves. And it's not because they don't care, but I just think they're maybe not equipped. You know? So uh, that is tough, but I really can't be concerned with that. You know, ultimately, if I wanted a guarantee, I should have finished him, you know. Probably would have helped if his fingers weren't inside my gloves, almost double digits. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. So I was just waiting. That's why I wasn't running around dancing, singing. Ultimately, I don't think the judges are looking at that. You know, he was put on a performance, and that's fine. That's, that's his personality. It's not mine. So uh, I'm going to put out the best performance I possibly can and let the rest take care of itself. And, you know, last time, you know, we had to wait for the decision. It went to the other guy, and this time it went to me. So uh, everybody's so tough. It's so competitive. I got to be okay with what's going to happen and be at peace with it. But uh, I am truly blessed that I got my hand raised and I'm living to fight another day, you know, and uh, that's, all I can, that's all I can ask for. Sounds good, Joe. And lastly, uh, any names? Uh, you're not a big calling out person. That's not your style. But how soon do we get to see you back in the cage with that sweet new beard? <laughs> this is great. You guys, this is great for my self-esteem. Thank you. I appreciate this. <laughs> uh, I have some friends I'm going to have to show this to them. Like, watch the interview. Listen to what they're saying. The beard's good. Uh, yeah, no, whenever they have me. You know, uh, I'd like to stay active. I think late fall would be awesome. I'm seeing stuff get booked for, like, October already. It's crazy. So, you know, before the new year would be awesome. At least I've got to stay at least, 
you know, we said two and a half fights is probably the sweet spot. So, you know, three in 12 months. So when did I fight last? Eight months ago. Another one before the end of the year would be spectacular. Um, but I'll be ready. I'll be back to training, teaching, doing everything. I, I'm having fun. You know, I'm having so much fun in the gym studying, um, you know, working with new coaches sometimes. And uh, I got the name that I want to call out are my, my coaches right there. You know, uh, Jeff Jim, our head coach, an absolute genius. I said to him backstage, every time I listen to you, great things happen. When I deviate it, not so great things were happening. John Salter, my friend, my mentor, um, Zach DeLeon. These guys, these guys are great, man. They're, they're so great. And uh, I just can't thank them enough for being here this week. Uh, my boxing coach back home, Chris Gowd who took me on, you know, seven years ago when I, I was the guard puller that you saw before you tonight uh, and, and taught me to have that confidence in my hands. And a new addition this time has been Alan Branch, a uh, kickboxing coach that had just moved to Wilmington, North Carolina. So now I'm not stuck traveling every time I want to kickbox. You know, I have him a couple times a week. We just started working right before camp started here. So, uh, you know, some things, you know, have to be implemented still. And uh, it's been a big help as well. So I want to thank all of them and all the gyms that we train at, you know, uh, Salt and Dollar Jiu-Jitsu, Port City MMA. GMO in Belmont, North Carolina, where you'll see Brian Barberino out here next and a bunch of guys in the UFC and other regional shows, um, Fitness Edge MMA, all those guys. That's who I want to call out. And most importantly, the two names i got to say thank you to is my wife and my daughter. I just love them absolutely uh, with me through it all, and it's been amazing. So I don't have a name for you that I want to fight, but I have the names that I want to thank. That sounds good, man. Brian has a big name coming up. How do you see that playing now? Before we oh, it's, I'm not going to pick against Brian Barberino, man. That guy, he beat, he beat death. So uh, we're, you know. I don't think Robbie Lawler's tougher than that, you know? So if you hear his story about uh, the ruptured artery, that's scarier than anything he's gonna see in the octagon. So uh, we're riding with him always. All right, I'm in. Thank you, sir, and look forward to your next bout. Thank you.